this drop, they could be in serious trouble. That should do it. There we go. It's Team Liquid. And that's what it means to them. They've taken it in the fourth map. The favourites coming into the tournament have just unlocked the Intel Grand Slam as ESO one Cologne under the belt. Hello and welcome to Inside Esports. I'm Zurich Herbuela and I will be your IGL as we break down all the CSGO action from ESL1 Cologne. But before we get into it with our special guests, it's time to throw some pog champs in the chat because here are the highlights. They do have a three man stuck on this side. Device just had a really rough game, flashed, he's gonna get that shot and that has to feel a little bit good. Out middle of the air to take down Alex and now they're pushing. Oh, oh no you've got to be kidding me! He takes every single one! It shouldn't be possible, but somehow they get the bomb plant. Dupree, all he needs is a single bullet, but oh. RPK will win the fight! Device and Sip left, and that is gonna be all she wrote. Device, there is nothing left here. They're all in front of him, and there it is! 16 rounds! It's gonna be a grand finals for Vitality. He's using the Deagle. He's got confidence in his name, and he sees oh! it as RPK is balanced! And That's Twist shows us all that Maple Syrup is just another form of Liquid! And he won't plant. There's no rush. Slow it down as Nap walks out. Zywu confirms the second map for Vitality. As Zywu has to shine through in a one on two, he's got the first. He it's on the second. Zywu's the god! He has the bomb. He tries to go down. It's a little bit late on the plan. Oh my goodness! My God! It's smoke on his right. Tap on the bomb. Spray through. 8 HP. And Alex is forced to move. Forced to get away. And the smoke's still down. At least knows he's oh! nowhere else. He has to be there. He is so smart. He clears everything. If it's RPK and there's drop, they could be in serious trouble. That should do it. There we go. It's Team Liquid. And that's what it means to them. They've taken it in the fourth map. The favorites coming into the tournament have just unlocked the Intel Grand Slam as ESL one Cologne under the belt. 2019, the year of NACS. What a time to be a CSGO fan. There's too much to love in the scene, including our guest for today, CSGO caster and analyst Vendetta. Welcome back to the show, man. How are you? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me back. Uh, I'm doing really well. Doing really well. I uh, just got, on, you know, I guess, kind of cooled down from a uh, really exciting uh, ESL Cologne. And uh, now I just got my eyes targeted on uh, on the majors. So uh, it's a good time to be a CS fan. Yeah, indeed. Uh, very exciting weekend. Let's start from the top. Team Liquid definitely, you know, held to their HLTV rankings, especially just sweeping pretty much the entire group stage. And of course, at the end, winning the Intel Grand Slam with a very streaky fashion, very similar to another team that we're going to talk about later. But now, obviously, the biggest question is genuinely, how good is this team and um, how much liquid is left in their tank? Uh, I think there's a fair bit of liquid left. I mean, there's no uh, no discussing that there's they're the best team in the world as it stands right now. I, I think with the the way they've started out their their season. I mean, obviously the the majors coming up, they've put themselves in a prime position to, you know, to to make a case for them having. If, if not the best, that's going to be tough to do, but potentially the second best season of any CS team in, in history, right? Just right behind Astralis from 2018. Uh, and, and, you know, that's not a small task. I think uh, obviously the mid is going to have a big impact on, on what kind of legacy they leave behind, but I don't think we're going to see Liquid just fall off the trail right now. They, they have no reason. They haven't shown any signs of weakness uh, in terms of letting down uh, or, or giving up on their form going into Berlin. So if you're a fan of North American Counter-Strike, you have no reason to, to be worried just yet. And I think uh, you have to you have to hold Liquid as favorites to, to pick up the major. That's amazing to hear because I am definitely a fan of NACS. Ah, uh, Dewey's my boy. Uh, another team that we have to talk about is uh, the second place team Vitality because uh, they were probably the only team that made Liquid kind of Sweat a Sweat. little bit, yeah. Uh, Zaiwu felt like a true force of nature. And after those finals, of course, a lot of people are comparing Zaiwu with Simple. But in your opinion, how similar are these two prodigies? And uh, what does Vitality need to take them to that next level? 
I mean, uh, one thing is, uh, and just the similarities between Simple and, and Zygo, I don't think they're too similar in, in terms of play style and, and how they go about things and necessarily how their their team is built up around them either. Uh, I think one of the, the really cool things as well is that Saiwu's had immediate impact. He pretty much went from all against, uh, or against all authority to playing in Vitality as his first professional team and having outstanding performances with his tier one teams uh, without any sort of a hiccup period. You know, didn't need time to adjust, didn't need to, to kind of come to grasp with the level uh, of the players around him, even though he took a massive jump. Uh, and with Simple, it was more of a gradual uh, transition, right? You had him from A Gaming to Flipside to Hellraisers and so on and so on. So he kind of went the, the, the stepping stones, I guess, of the CIS region before he ended up in Navi. Not that it makes it any less impressive what he's obviously capable of doing now, but there's a little bit of a difference in how, how they got there. But it, it has led to, you know, now, now we don't just have a, a really exciting, uh, you know, race as to, you know, who's going to win tournaments. There's a lot more competition there. But now there's actually a legitimate contender for who's the best player in the world uh, might be because Simple kind of solidified that uh, that title for uh, for quite some time. And now Zaiwu is just like a like a rocket uh, <laughs> coming in there and, and just showcasing what kind of skill he has. Uh, and obviously, I, I think that's kind of what Vitality needs to nurture as well, you know, to, to answer the question as to where they need to go next. Uh, they're still a fairly new team mm -hmm. in, in terms of what they've, uh, you know, how long they've been together, together how many tournaments they've played. Keep in mind, Zaiwu is still a rookie on uh, on the pro circuit. And I think uh, that's really all they need to keep in mind. The fact that they're having the results they're having right now is kind of just, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's just the, the cherry on the top, really. So just keep doing what you're doing. Don't get too far ahead of yourselves. Even in the in the finals where they managed to take a map off of Liquid, you had some of their, I guess, regular performers falling off completely. That's not necessarily something you need to stress out about, right? You give yourself more time. You figure out better ways to incorporate the, the four others around the way you're making Zaiwu be in a prime position to perform. And I think you have something really good working for you if you're Vitality. Yeah, and I mean, he is definitely one of those players that you can put in you know, a 1v4 scenario and you're just like, <laughs> okay, that's still an even match because he is just that good. It, it is pretty ridiculous. And uh, I, I think that's why to, to me, and I've said this on, uh, on a couple of other podcasts as well, the fact that I've, I've never been as excited about, or not in recent time, I haven't been as excited about a player as I am about Saibu for, for that exact reason. The fact that you could go into 1v4 and it's like, well, it's Saibu, <laughs> so there's still a chance. And, you know, a, a just disgusting amount of times, it actually pans out as well. Uh, and the one, the few times it doesn't, right, he brings it down to 1v1 or mm -hmm. he does something magical, right? And he, he just has that je ne sais quoi that, you know, it's it's hard to pinpoint. It's hard to to, to explain uh, what it is, but something something magic to him. And I mean, the fact that his birthday is on, you know, the release of uh, Counter Strike doesn't make it, you know, any less special. He was born to be in there. Exactly. All right, let's move on to the last team that I really want to talk about because originally I thought this team was kind of just taking a break from you know all the competition and taking care of their mental health. Uh, as they stepped away from big events, which of course I respect, but it seems like the vacation time has finally caught up with them these past few months. Uh, talk to us about what's happening the, with the downswing of Astralis and what can they do to turn it around, or is it one of those things where everyone has finally figured them all out? So uh, with Astralis, it's, uh, you can look at their 2018 as a bit of a perfect storm, and obviously those kind of things eventually end. Uh, and uh, the, the only sad part about uh, the entire run that Astral has had is that many people are going to be left with uh, the feeling that they ended it themselves. Uh, and as you said, they took a lot of breaks from from uh, going to Premier tournaments, which, again, I can definitely see it. The, I don't think most people at home realize how much of a hectic life it is being a pro gamer at the very highest level if you just accept every invite, if you go to every tournament, and what kind of just mental drain that is uh, on all the players because you, you never stay in one region or stay in one region for too long. You're constantly on a plane or in an airport, uh, just living out of hotels. It's, it's not necessarily an ideal life. And I mean, obviously, these are people who have, you know, lives at home too. You know, some have girlfriends, some have family that they want to spend time with and all that stuff. So it, it, became, it can become really draining. And I think Astralis had a really good balance to it last year where they uh, kind of figured out what was best for them. They didn't want to travel too much. Uh, so you can't really fault, fault them for it. But 
obviously there is an obvious downside of not being matched against the, the very best teams in the world. You can talk about how obviously practice time is all in well. It's good to have. It's something that teams need when they kind of need to revitalize themselves. But you need to have that top, top matching. And even though you're practicing against the best teams in the world, it's a very different thing about uh, playing the same kind of teams in, in a competitive setting on a stage and so on. So for, for Australis, I don't think there's any reason to panic. Uh, I think we've seen definite uh, improvements from, you know, their first time back and then, you know, stepping into ECS and then obviously now at uh, Cologne. There's been improvements. Uh, their individuals are playing better and better. Now we had a bit of an off tournament from Device, which is, mm -hmm. you know, very much against the norm. Uh, so I, I think for uh, coming into the major uh, in, in Berlin, it's still going to be Liquid versus Astralis. I don't think that storyline has necessarily died down. But this time around, it's on Astralis to kind of showcase that, that they're back. They're the ones that have something to prove. It's not going to be Liquid having to, to overcome, you know, the. The, the skeleton in the closet of, uh, of constantly choking out and ending in second place or not being able to topple Astralis. That, that's dead. Now it's all about Astralis having to prove themselves. But I, I do still think they have it in them. They just uh, kind of got a bit of a harsh awakening to, uh, to what happens when you're not in, in fighting form, you know, at any given mm -hmm. stay, uh, time in, in this kind of industry. So, yeah. I'm so excited for what's about to come. Uh one last thing before you go, was there any particular play in the entire ESL1 Cologne that stood out for you that you were like, that was maybe the device op ace maybe, because that was definitely mine, because that was insane. But what was your favorite play of that entire tournament? Yeah, I, I want to say, uh, given the context as well, right? Like on Inferno, Astralis are struggling. Device has had a very quiet game. Pulls out an ace for the double to, to boot, and they, they kind of ring it back from there. Yeah, I, that'd probably be my highlight uh, for the tournament as well, if you want to go into specifics. Outside of that, just watching Zai Wu progress as a player, seeing him proving doubters wrong, right? Like, for every hurdle he has, everyone's like, this is going to be where he stops. This is going to be where he fails. And I'm, I'm doing that as well. I'm thinking, like, mm -hmm. there's no way he can perform in this one. There's no does. way he can do it. Exactly. So that's just, like, a continuous highlight for me that... And I enjoy watching a lot. But yeah, now if you want to talk about specific highlights, I feel like the Vice, given the context uh, of, and situation of the game, mm -hmm. that has to be uh, my highlight.